guys, my name is Alyssa, I'm a stylist here at Lulu's, and today we are going to be talking about the five most common mistakes that are hurting your piercings. So one of the most common things is sleeping on your piercing. I know it's super common and everybody's like, wait, what? That affects it? Yes. You're not allowed to be sleeping on your ear. You definitely want to avoid that for the first couple weeks up until you feel comfortable. But sleeping on your ear can definitely cause some swelling, irritation, even possibly bumps, especially if you have an industrial. It is highly not recommended to sleep on your ear. So mistake number two is definitely touching your piercing. You are not supposed to be touching it just because if you think about it, your hands are dirty, you touch everything throughout the day. You don't want to get those germs on your piercing because that can definitely cause a serious infection that's just nasty, you don't want it. You don't want to touch them, you don't want to twist them. One of the most common things with nose piercings are that people tend to twist them, they tend to play with them, and that's something you just don't want to do. You don't want to be pushing that earring up or down or moving in it, like it's just not worth it. It's gonna cause a lot of irritation, your ear's gonna get swollen, you can get an infection. Once you get that infection, it can be really painful. You could wanna like be to the point where you're like, okay, I'm taking this thing out, I don't want it anymore. You just wanna avoid all of that. Okay, so mistake number three is definitely gonna be getting it caught on things. You can get, honestly, any piercing caught on anything. It's a nightmare. So just a heads up, another thing is getting it caught. So basically with your mask, now that we have masks, you can get your nose piercing caught, the crystal prong onto the top of the mask. You can yank it, that will cause irritation. Another thing is helixes. You can have that string right behind your ear and then when you pull it off, you yank on that backing and that can definitely hurt and cause your ear to swell up. Another one is your hair. You always wanna be cautious with your hair, especially if you have long hair. It can get caught on any of your piercings. It's a nightmare, even when you take a shower, just be gentle, kind of just be cautious of where you were pierced at, what piercing you have, just be cautious of everything going around it. Worst case, um, I've heard was like a loofah getting caught on a belly. That's definitely painful, don't recommend it. Um, I had that happen to me, it's a nightmare. And you always wanna just be cautious, make sure you're pulling your mask out further away, being careful, your hair, towel when you take a shower and you wrap your hair up. Any little thing can get caught. Even when you're taking off your clothes, you can snag your nose piercing, you can hit your earlobe, things like that. Very simple things that you could just avoid if you watch some video that's like this that gives you advice, you, you'll be fine. So mistake number four is gonna be taking out your earrings prematurely. You definitely don't wanna do that because it can cause infections, it can cause irritation, just like everything else. We typically pierce with a longer post so that you have extra room just in case for that healing process. If you snag it, you hit it, you sleep on it, something tends to happen. We give you a little extra room just for that. And that is why it's ideal not to switch it out until the whole healing process is done just so that your piercing heals correctly, safely, and it's perfect. One example I do have for you guys is I had a girl come in, she swapped out her two helixes, they were right next to each other one on top, one below, and she decided to swap them out after four months of having them pierced. She put in a hoop, both of them created bumps. The hoops caused that bump, and sometimes that hoop can tend to make a bump that kind of curves with the ear, which is really gross, it doesn't look pretty. So when she came in, we had to take off those hoops, we took them out, I told her that we had to put in a post, she had to go back to the post and deal with the healing process all over again, but this time we had to do an extra long bar that's longer than what we pierced with just because those bumps needed room to heal, to breathe, and kind of just, just so they had enough room to kind of compress down and go back to the normal ear. She wasn't a fan of the post, but it does suck. She said she regretted changing them into the hoops too soon and that she should have just waited. So my personal recommendation is definitely wait a little bit longer than the healing time just to make sure you don't run into any problems like that because it does hurt in the long run if you do do that. So the fifth most common mistake is gonna be sanitation. You wanna make sure it's cleaned properly. A lot of people tend to mess up on this. They think, oh, I don't have to clean it every day. My piercing's gonna be fine. Every other day is fine. Wrong. You want to clean it every day, twice a day, morning and night. And especially if you work out, you go to the gym and you have like an outdoorsy life, 
You want to make sure you clean it after every activity just to make sure that sweat buildup, none of that causes like an infection. Um, also, another thing is the main spray that we use is going to be saline wound wash. You want to make sure it is a wound wash. You don't want to use alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, tea tree oil, none of that because it does dry out your skin and tea tree oil can cause a chemical burn. That's only for severe things that we recommend. But for the beginning, stay away from tea tree oil. It is not necessary. A lot of people tend to clean their ears with Q-tips, which is not recommended because that cotton can get caught on your earring, can snag, it can cause irritation by you rubbing at it, trying to pick off any gunk. The way you wanna get rid of that gunk that gets stuck on your ear is just by spraying it. You wanna spray it. As long as you're spraying it, it should fall off within two, three days. I know it's gonna look gross, but you just wanna get through it and get rid of that so your ear looks better. So if you guys have any educational questions, go ahead and drop a comment down below and we will go ahead and look at them and get back to you.